Mini episode 72 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by the Pullins Group, delivering public affairs consulting and marketing services for small businesses trying to grow. Follow them on the web at PullinsGroup.com. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Welcome to mini-episode 72 of the FDH Lounge and our 20th adaptation of the FantasyDraftHelp.com Insider in this format after eight years on our previous platform. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our top five changes in the fantasy football landscape in 2011. This season was an incredible ride, coming as it did on the heels of the lockout and a super-compressed off-season of transactions and preparation. In a minute, FDH lists your top five changes in the landscape over this past season. Folks, you're listening to the FantasyDraftHelp.com Insider. I'm telling you, she is a real ball buster. (laughs) A real ice queen. Mm. I just burned my tongue. The only way to bag a classy lady is to give her two tickets to the gun show. (laughs) And see if she likes the goods. I'm just going to grab this shirt if you don't mind. Just watch out for the guns. They'll get you. (laughs) You are pathetic. Wait a minute! I'm offended! I have very little time to get to the gym, so I have to to scope my guns at the office. Oh, stop calling your arms guns. So here's your top five changes over the past fantasy football season. Number five, overall offensive explosiveness. In many ways, this was the defining overall story of the season, fantasy and otherwise, but we've got it this low on our list because we cannot be sure it will completely carry over into 2012 and beyond. Yes, in some ways, the incredible air show that we saw in so many corners of the league was a logical culmination of recent NFL trends, But seasons that are compressed by labor issues are not always representative of broader trends. Just look at the NBA, where shooting consistency this year is at its worst point since the last shortened season. In the unique circumstances of 2011, NFL offenses were well ahead of the defenses, and that will probably be the case in 2012 as well. It would just be wise to count on this being true to a lesser degree. Number four, respect the slot. Wes Welker has been one of the leading receivers in the NFL since he got to New England, but this year Victor Cruz joined him in the league's top three in receiving yardage. Grantland.com has a great article up this week about a partial revival of the run-and-shoot offense in the league, and this reality accounts for a good amount of the success inside the hash marks. So going forward, look increasingly beyond traditional split ends and flankers for your fantasy playmakers. Number three. It's not just rookie running backs lighting it up anymore. Traditionally, rookie quarterbacks aren't worth anything in a fantasy sense, although increasingly they have been able to manage their teams to excellent one-loss records when surrounded by the right talent. But try telling that to Cam Newton, who exploded on the scene unlike any other signal caller in the fantasy era. Is he just an outlier? Almost certainly so, but his success does adjust expectations for Andrew Luck and other super blue-chip QBs coming into the league over the next few seasons. And while starting caliber rookie wide receivers have not been as rare as the passers, they have not been plentiful either, which makes the success of A.J. Green and Julio Jones, when healthy, that much more jarring. With the greatest crop of wide receivers entering the league since the vaunted class of 96 this year, don't be afraid to consider top ones like Justin Blackman as fantasy starters, depending on where they end up, of course. As a matter of fact, the flukiest fantasy position was running back this past year, where the rookie depth was poorer than usual. Only DeMarco Murray made a case for himself as a long-term fantasy star right off the bat. Number two, the age of the tight ends has arrived. We at FDH were a bit early on this one, frankly, 
advising in 2010 that positional depth had advanced to the point where you could sit back longer than usual and still cover yourself nicely at this spot. It took another year to develop, but not only is the depth outstanding, you have two studs like Rob Gronkowski and Jimmy Graham who have shown that they can actually put up numbers like high-end wide receivers. These two keyed two of the three best offenses in the league, with Green Bay being the third, so Jermichael Finley's disappointing statistical year matters less in the grand scheme of this copycat league than the fact that every coach now wants a huge guy who can run. Brandon Pettigrew in Detroit is another specimen who has shown what he can bring to a high-powered offense. Going into 2012, tight end now features two players worth high-round draft picks or mega dollars in an auction league and amazing depth for owners who don't end up with the Super Gs. Number one, massive turnover at the top tier of quarterbacks. In 2011, we said goodbye to Brett Favre and probably to Peyton Manning. Michael Vick played his way off the top tier while Eli Manning, Matthew Stafford, and Cam Newton blew past him like he was tied to a tree. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and Tom Brady carved out a super tier at the top similar to the one at tight end. Yes, the game's most important position saw more adjustments at the top end in 2011 than the previous few seasons combined. The season concluded with a longer list of worthy number ones than when it started, as well as some different names on that list, and others like Matt Ryan and possibly Vic again, poised to join it sometime in 2012. So there's our look at developments from this past fantasy football season. Thanks for checking us out. Grow break off a little value on your opponents in fantasy sports. And be sure to sample our other Nothing Is Off Topic mini-episodes, including our recent conversation with rock superstar Steve Perry from the FDH Lounge.